Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm going to go over all the differences between Vegas Pro 20 and the new Vegas Pro 21. All right, so we're inside Vegas Pro 21 right now, and the first thing we're going to be talking about are the GUI updates, or the graphical user interface updates. The change of looks and buttons and things like that. To start it off, the first difference you will see are the splash pages while Vegas is loading. On the left, I have Vegas 20, and on the right, I have Vegas 21. Both programs take almost exactly the same amount of time to load into the software. So, the first initial changes we'll be seeing are the changes to the Vegas hub itself right here. And then some of the more noticeable changes are the buttons. You'll see that they become a little bit easier to read. They have a black stroke around them, so they're more prominent and easy to press. And some of the icons have changed a little bit. And as far as looks, that's pretty much it. Next, we'll talk about the Vegas hub updates. Inside the Vegas Hub tab, you will see the different icons. So we have the My Profile button. When you click that, you can see your subscription status, all the different specs and availability that comes with your subscription. Next, we can click on the What's New tab, and in here you'll see all the changes that they made inside the latest version of Vegas and a history of changes for all the other versions of Vegas, starting with 20. You can click these drop-downs and easily read what is new. And next we have the Vegas content button. When you click on this, you'll see a new Vegas content layout, which allows you to easily search for certain things or see what's trending for specific categories of videos and audio. Then we have the learn button, which is a very useful asset for if you wanna learn some of the basics of Vegas Pro, instead of having to search through YouTube videos and trying to find something relevant. These all work with the latest version. And next we have example projects, which if you click on this, you can download a pre-made project file completely with footage and everything provided by Vegas. So you can practice your skills and start learning about new different things. And then we have the expansions pack tab. When you click on this, it'll show you what expansions are available for Vegas, basically plugins and add-ons that they're advertising. The two that they've had for the past couple years are movie expansion pack and sound expansion pack. Then the bottom two are the community tab. When you click on community, it'll open up a web page that leads you to the Vegas community where you can search for solutions or problems or keywords and look through the forums to see what's new or a fix for the issue you're having. And then we have the social button. So when you click that, it'll show you all the latest posts on all the different social media feeds that Vegas likes to use. Next, we're going to talk about new plugins, effects, and transitions. To start it off in the video effects tab, you will see a new light tab, which they categorized all the light effects and put them in there. Next, we're going to be talking about adjustment events. An adjustment event is a piece of media that you can add effects to and also cut and split and add transitions to go between them. And any piece of media, picture or video underneath that adjustment event will get that effect applied to it. You can drag and customize the length of an adjustment event just as you would any piece of media and then drag and drop effects to it, kind of like this static effect. You can even customize the fade in and out of the adjustment event and you can right click and add as many as you want. You can then drag them into other pieces of media and cross fade them for transitions between these effects as you see here. Now keep in mind, if you do transition these effects, only the effects are gonna show the transitions so that transition will not affect the clip underneath. You can replicate the transition on the clip underneath the events to add a little bit extra to your video. Now keep in mind, an adjustment event is different than an adjustment track, which was introduced in the previous versions of Vegas. Adjustment tracks are very similar. You can add effects to the tracks themselves, but you can't add transitions to them. You have to use the compositing tool to adjust the strength of the effect, which can get pretty tedious because if you wanted to add multiple effects and transitions to these effects, you have to add a bunch of adjustment tracks and then play with the compositing to get it the way you want to see. So Vegas introducing adjustment events has been a big help to make it more convenient to do that. One thing to know is that there are effects that adjust the warping of your video and you can apply those to the adjustment events. But when you fade it in and out above your original clip, it's not going to animate the clip to warp to the result you're hoping for. It's actually just going to be fading it in and out. So you will still see the original clip until the transition is over, and then you'll see the clip with the desired effect that you apply to the adjustment event. So realistically, adjustment events are much more geared towards visual looks rather than manipulation style effects. The next thing they added are two new GL transitions the directional scale and the static wipe. The directional scale allows you to create sort of like a window movement transition, which you can customize the distance between each of those frames inside the parameters. 
You can also adjust the direction of where you want the transition to move to. And that's all the customization options you have for that specific transition. Next, we have the static wipe, which creates a static border that wipes across your video, which you can control to go downward or upward. And you can control the width of it by adjusting the strength toggle. Now I'm gonna talk about the new effects that they added. The first one will be offset and wrap, which when you apply it to a video, it creates duplicates of that specific frame. I will be going into the details of these effects in separate videos because this video will be extremely long if I went to the details of all these new effects. Next, we're gonna see Smart Mask. When we drag that onto our clip, it uses AI to analyze the clip, detect what's in there, and then you can mask around it kind of like a form of rotoscoping automatically. And then we have the Z-Depth effect. If you drag that onto your clip, it automatically tries to detect depth in your shot. So when it does, it will change this piece of media into a composite media, allowing you to add or interlace other media in between what it's detecting the depth of. And you can adjust all that yourself as well. And finally, they added Moga Vegas, which is a custom plugin created by Boris Effects for Vegas Pro 21 specifically. Now keep in mind, the Mocha Vegas plugin is only available for Vegas Pro post users. If you end up purchasing the Vegas Pro Edit or Vegas Pro Suite models, you will not get the Mocha Vegas plugin. When you drag this effect onto a clip, it'll allow you to go through a bunch of different types of masking parameters and launch Mocha itself. From here, you can use all of Mocha's tools to do extremely advanced tracking. And then you'll be able to seamlessly export that into other plugins of Vegas. And finally, we're going to talk about some of the more important changes that we can't really visualize, but the Vegas engineers worked to make huge changes on the Vegas code base itself, allowing them to use more modern tools that other top editors use, as well as better integrate Vegas with other parts of Magix's software and tools that they create. The old architecture was extremely limiting and didn't allow the Vegas developers to implement new tools or features efficiently, or even at all. With the upgrades to the code base, Vegas will be able to start keeping up with rapid changes, tools, features, and improvements you see in other editors. Another benefit of updating the code base is that it provides more stability as well as compatibility with newer hardware and types of media. In the past, Vegas was essentially maxed out at how well it could perform, but now they'll be able to perform tasks much more quickly and efficiently. Since using Vegas 21, I really haven't had a single crash on any of my projects, knock on wood. Now the drawback to them taking so much time as they did and using so many engineers and resources to upgrade the code from the Stone Age to the 21st century is that they didn't have a lot of time to develop too many features for this version, as you saw in this overview. But those new things that they did end up adding are really, really awesome. And that wraps it up for this video. If it helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next one.